Now that you know how to save a launch, the next step is to get those launches out of the persistent store and display them in a list so that you can see when they take place. Core Data retrieves records from the data store by means of a fetch request. Fetch request, represented by the class NSFetchRequest, must contain an entity description or name and optionally a way to sort and filter the results that you get back. Navigate to Rocket Launch plus Core Data Properties, and in the extension of Rocket Launch, you're going to define a fetch request to fetch all the launches in the data store. You don't need to define the request here, but it's a common convention since you can house the logic all in one place instead of in views or view controllers. Instances of NSManageObject have a class or instance method that returns a generic fetch request. If you navigate to the definition of Rocket Launch and click through to read the interface of NSManageObject, you'll see a fetch request declared that returns a value of type NSFetchRequest. You could use this, but in SwiftUI, there are property wrappers that make life easier. Define a static function in the extension of Rocket Launch. I'm naming this basic fetch request as opposed to just fetch request to avoid having to override the existing fetch request function. Instead of returning an object of type NS fetch request, we're going to return an instance of type fetch request. This is a generic struct defined in the Swift UI framework and used as a property wrapper. You'll need to import the Swift UI framework. And then back in the function, you can return a fetch request that is generic over rocket launch. The generic type parameter, rocket launch in this case, indicates that the results returned by this fetch request are going to be a series of rocket launches. In the body of the function, return an instance of the fetch request type. There are several convenience initializers, and you're going to use the one that takes an entity and a sort descriptor. The entity is an object of type NS entity description and is the entity represented by this class. All NS manage object subclasses have a class function defined that returns the entity type of the subclass. You're going to leave the second argument alone for now. We'll circle back in just a bit. Now that you have a fetch request, you can wire it up with a Swift UI view and core data handles everything automatically. Navigate to Launches view, where the mock data is currently set up, and define a property that stores the fetch request. Next, you need to add one more property to the view, one that contains the result of the fetch. Fetch results is defined in the SwiftUI framework and is a generic collection type that represents the results of performing a fetch request. What you've done here is add an easier way to access this collection by exposing the wrapped value property on the fetch request. If you've been using SwiftUI and property wrappers for a while now, you might be shaking your head at this. The correct, more SwiftUI oriented way to write this is... What I've done for now is to split up this logic so that you can see what's going on under the hood. If you're comfortable with property wrappers, feel free to write it that way. Later on in this course, you'll switch to using property wrappers. You can use this collection inside the for each view to display the rocket launches. Before you can do that though, you need to update the views. Create an H stack within the for each. Replace the placeholder text with the name of the launch and a custom view to denote whether the user has viewed this launch or not. Now you need to update the preview for launches view so the canvas renders properly. Remember the preview context that you made when filling out the persistence.swift file? You're using it here to take advantage of that in-memory context for your previews. 
you still have a little work to do with the for each operator. In the definition of the 4H view, remove the range operator and replace it with the launches collection obtained by executing the fetch request. At the moment, the closure is discarding the value that's passed in. Modify this to pass in the rocket launch value. Now the 4H is ready to go. Build and run the app. The launch you created in the last course should be visible. If you didn't watch that course, go ahead and add a new launch now. Great, you have successfully created and saved rocket launches and fetched them from the persistent store. Core Data and SwiftUI handled a lot of the work for you automatically, and that's by design. In addition to Core Data handling the persistence for you, the Property Observer Fetch Request handles the fetching of data and manages updating the views if the persistent store changes. You can see this in action by adding a new rocket launch. When you save, the view should automatically update as the state changes. With SwiftUI and Core Data, saving and retrieving data is very easy. In the next video, let's talk about how you can sort this data.